Now there are a lot of additional ways to control subdivision surfaces beyond the basic transform tools as well. So let's take a look at the subdivision edit menu. The first tool in the subdivision edit menu is the grow face command. And the grow face command will actually take a face and it will offset an additional face to the inside of that and push it either outward or inward in a direction. And this is the first time we're actually gonna see some on-screen widgets that are gonna show up when we click on this. So first I'm gonna click on the yellow one and clicking and dragging, you'll notice, gives us an on-screen angle indicator, which we can manipulate, but we can also pull away from our origin point or we can push it back into our origin point. So you can see I can balloon this face out or I can squeeze it back into the subdivision surface just by dynamically moving this widget around on screen. But just to illustrate my original point about this grow face command, it offset a new face to the middle, so it's created a new quad on the inside, and it has connected that quad back to the original face with four additional quads at the edges. Now this illustrates why it's important to stick with quads when you're working with subdivision surfaces because the tool set at its most basic nature uses quads when it's calculating these different types of commands. So the grow face tool not only just moves a face, it actually is adding subdivisions to the cage while also growing that face. So if I go back to the swap tool and let's take a look at the underlying geometry, we can see that it has pulled a new face out and away from that original face to give us this new one. And this is starting to look a little bit crazy, but again, swapping it back to the subdivision surface, if that's the shape you're going for, it doesn't really matter what that underlying cage looks like. It just matters what that subdivision surface looks like in the end. So we could also show controls and we can see all of those different control points as well, just to really understand how it's shaping that subdivision surface underneath the cage. So let's take a look at the grow face command on a simpler subdivision surface. So I'm going to go back and just draw a simple polygon one more time here. I'm going to convert that into a sub D and I'm going to then deselect it. Now clicking on it with the grow face tool, you'll notice that the whole face highlights when I hover over it and clicking on it once gives us that balloon type of a shape where it has offset a new face to the interior and it has moved it in a direction at a certain magnitude. And again, we have access to these widgets, so I could drag this widget down and push that surface down. I could drag it inward and just create more of a flat surface, and you can create all kinds of different shapes. So let's say I was going for something like that. Now let's go ahead and click on the swap tool to see what that looks like underneath. And you can see it's kind of a rhombus-shaped polygon and it has a hole in the bottom of it. And if I swap it back to a sub D, you can see that it also has a hole in it as a sub D as well. So now let's take a look at the grow edge tool. And one thing I wanna highlight before we click on the grow edge tool is the tool options. And here we have distance and angle, just like we did with grow face, but we also have a sequence checkbox. So with sequence checked, and I hover over an edge of our subdivision surface, click on that, you can see it grows all of the edges because we had sequence checked. Let's undo that and this uncheck sequence. And if I click on a single edge, you'll notice that only that one edge grows out. So pay attention to that. That could be important when you're working with this to get the results that you're after. And again, we get that on screen widget to control the direction, the angle and the magnitude of that offset. Now the neat thing about subdivision surfaces are that you don't have to start with surfaces. You can start with volumes. So what we're gonna do is draw a volume. So I'm going to just go to my 3D extrusion tool here and I'm just going to click and draw a cube. So I'm gonna to go to my subdivision surface tool to convert this cube into a sub D. And like when we clicked on the flat plane, it converted it into a circle. When I click on a planar cube, it turns it into an almost spherical like object. And now we have a control cage that correlates with our original object. So once again, I could go into the sharpness controls and start to make it look more like a cube if I wanted to, or less like a cube. And again, we could change the number of iterations. If I go to wireframe view, we can see it's a very dense mesh. So if we convert the iterations down to three, for example, it's gonna lighten that up substantially. 
and now that might be a little bit better display performance. And just like with the other subdivisions that we've looked at, we can hover over these different elements and we can click and we can drag them. And when you're clicking and dragging, if you hold down the shift key along these axes, you can actually constrain the movement to those axes. So that may be something that you want to incorporate when you're doing your sculpting. Click on edges and drag those edges. We can click on points and drag those points. And this is all manipulating that underlying sub D surface, just like it was when we were manipulating the surfaces, but this time it is a volume. I'm going to hide my controls. We're going to take a look at a couple of other subdivision edit tools. So let's first look at the stretch command. And the stretch command you can think of like a move command for faces. So if I click on a face, you'll see that it moves it some preset amount and that preset amount is determined by the tool options you can see it was set to a very small number like two inches but we also get the on-screen widgets so i can click and drag these and you can see just like using the move tool on that face i'm now using the stretch command to basically accomplish the same thing i can also scale it with these other widgets so stretch is move and scale kind of combined into a single widget or tool set Stretch also works on segments in addition to faces. So clicking on this segment, we'll notice that we also get that on-screen widget and it will move a segment with the blue indicator and with the red and green indicators, we can manipulate the scale of those segments. Next up is the offset face tool and anywhere you have a face on a subdivision surface like these or on this object, we can offset that inward. So I'm going to click in and you can see that it has created a new face that is offset off that original one. And just like over here, when we used the grow face tool, it added connecting quads to connect that new face to it. It does the same thing here with this one. This time we get a different widget set so we can move that new offset face either inward or outward. And of course we can change the scale of that new face with this green arrow control. And we can do it numerically in tool options. You do not simply have to rely on the dynamic visual widgets to control that. Next up is the offset edge tool. And we're gonna take a look at the tool options here. We have a distance command, we have a symmetric command, and we have a sequence command. So with the tool option set to self, and if I click on a segment with the offset edge command, it's going to grab that edge and it is going to manipulate it kind of like using the stretch command, but we're doing it to edges. So I'm going to click on this edge and because sequence was checked, it's actually grabbing the entire sequence all the way around this object and manipulating it at the same time. If I uncheck the sequence command and click on one edge, it's now just going to move that one edge. And what I'm going to do is move that down and then orbit around so you can actually see. It only manipulated that side of the object. It left this other edge where it was. Now what I'm going to do is choose the copy command and I'm going to turn sequence back on. So if I click on this edge here, what I want to do is create another controlling edge that will give me a sharper corner along the top here by inserting a new sequence. So clicking on this and dragging upward, you can see it accomplished exactly what I was going for. It copied that edge up as a sequence all the way around the object and gave me a sharper corner at the top here. So what I'm going to do now is add one additional sequence here into the middle. I'm going to copy this one down into the middle and we're going to take a look at the next command, which is the squeeze command. And you can kind of think of this as scale, but it's going to scale an entire sequence as long as I have the sequence box checked in my tool options. So clicking on the segment right here, you can see I can start to pull this out or I could push it in. And remember, it's using our other edges as controls for the beginning and the ending of that kind of manipulation. So it's not going to push that very much beyond the adjacent cage elements that exist. And if I turn off sequence, I can apply that just to a single, and you can see it now is manipulating just one side of the object, and I can bulge that out asymmetrically now. The next tool in the subdivision edit toolbox is the divide tool and the subdivide tool will take every quad and divide it into four patches. So if I orbit to the top of this object, watch what happens with this top face. What we're going to do when we click on it is going to divide this cage and make it basically four times as heavy as it is now. So clicking on that, 
you can see it has divided every face and it has also radically shifted the shape of this object. And that's because there is a tool option to divide this cage without doing it like that. And that is the keep shape button up here. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna now click on keep shape. So let's say I wanted to add more cage elements but not modify the shape to this. You wanna make sure you click that keep shape tool. It will now subdivide each one of these faces into four but it will keep the exact shape that this already is. And you can see by doing that, it's subdivided these into four different faces and it has kept those shapes. Now, if I were to go into the grow face command, you can see every one of these faces operates independently from each other. And if I click on that, I can now begin to modify smaller elements in the cage and because I have more controls. The next tool in the toolbox is the subdivision close tool. And before I show you how that works, let's look at what happens when we create an opening. So using the pick tool, and I'm just gonna go to the face topology level. I'm gonna click on the top face of this, and I'm just gonna simply click the delete button. You'll notice when I do that, it opens this up and kind of flares it out. That's because that interface is no longer there to control the rounding of the subdivision surface underneath. Now, another way to accomplish that would be to select this object and show controls. And you'll notice now the control cage is getting fairly unwieldy. But if I now hover over one of these areas like this one and I right click, I can say remove and you'll see it does the same thing. So there are ways to accomplish it with the cage showing and without. I personally prefer without the cage because I think the cage at this level is very difficult to see what's going on. So I might prefer to turn the controls back off and just directly select a face and then hit the delete key to create an opening. Now, if I click on the close tool, it will find any open areas like that and it will patch them back up. So I'm just gonna click on an edge of that opening and it patches it right back to how it was. And you can see by putting a face there, it brought the surface back in with the same curvature that it had before. And clicking on this opening, I can accomplish the same thing. So that can come in very handy when you have openings. Maybe you wanted to create an opening, go inside, work around, and then close it back up afterwards as if you were doing surgery. You can do that on subdivision surface objects. Now what you don't have to do is start with the most basic planes and cube objects. You can start with any shapes you want as long as, again, they are polygonal in nature. So what I'm going to do here is just draw a cube. It's gonna be 10 feet in each direction. And I'm just gonna click in the middle of my grid to get that cube there. Then what I'm gonna do is set my topological level to faces, go to wireframe view, select all the faces, even the back faces of this object, go back to my shaded view, and I'm going to click on the reshape button. I'm gonna say perpendicular to surface, and I'm just going to click and start to drag. I'm gonna reshape all the sides of this object at the same time. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to auto pick. I'm going to select the entire object, and I'm gonna turn that into a subdivision surface. You can see that very quickly, we can come up with some really interesting shapes by starting off with a more intricate cage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the sharpness and move that up to, I don't know, something like 27. I'm gonna decrease the iterations down to three and that's looking good. I'm gonna stop there. Now this subdivision surface is a little bit more complicated than what we started off with the cube and I'm gonna use this to illustrate the next tool in the subdivision edit box, which is the bridge tool. And before I do that, I'm going to move a copy of this object and I'm not gonna use the move tool to do so. I'm just gonna make sure that I have allow drag and allow copy checked in the tool options. And I'm gonna hold down the option key and drag a copy of this object over. Now I have two objects that are both subdivision surfaces and let's take a look at how the bridge tool works. Now there's two different ways that you could utilize the bridge tool. You can either apply it to faces or edges. So let's look at the face option first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first grow a couple of faces. I'm gonna click on this face here and I'm gonna click on this face here and grow both of those a little bit higher. Now I'm gonna click on the bridge tool and I'm going to bridge between these two elements along the top here. So I'm gonna click on a face of this first object. I'm gonna orbit over here and click on a face of the second object. They don't have to be two separate objects. You can bridge from one face to another on the same object. 
But one thing that you'll notice here is that form Z kind of twisted this sub D as it bridged across. Now that might be what you're going for and that would be perfectly okay, but you'll see that it's kind of transitioned from this side edge up to this top edge here. And the reason that I bring this up is because in the toolbox there is actually a twist command and we can untwist that by simply jogging through different twist numbers. So twist of one, twist of two is still not what I want. Twist of three, you can see straightens that out. So that might be something to be aware of as you're playing with the bridge tool. If you don't get the exact results that you were looking for, you may wanna play with twist. Let's undo that and let's go through the bridge tool and do that one more time here to illustrate some of the other tool options. Now we also have the ability to add edges. So if I click on the edge tool, you'll see that it divided the bridge with a sequence right in the middle. Now if I go up here and I change the number of edges to three, for example, and hit the return key, you see I now get three subdivisions in the middle of that bridge. So depending on the type of control you want, of course you can add those sequence edges in later if that makes more sense, but it is nice to have that ability right in the bridge tool itself. So I said that the bridge tool also works with edges and I don't have any bare edges on this object so I'm going to create some real quick. So again, using the pick tool with the face topo level, I'm just gonna delete a couple of faces off of my object here. So what I'm gonna do is click on this open edge on this side and I'm gonna click on this open edge on this side and you can see it builds a subdivision bridge right down the middle. Now that might make sense if you wanted to just draw a surface in between, but let's go ahead and use this tool in an additional way to create a tube all the way across. So I'm gonna delete this face on this side and I'm gonna delete this face on this side. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bridge right in between both of those. So using the bridge tool, this time I'm going to click on the sequence command and I'm gonna bridge this sequence to this sequence you can see it now bridged in between those as if I had bridged from face to face. So it's up to you which direction you wanna go. If you wanna bridge from face to face or if you wanna delete faces and then bridge sequences, that works either way. Now the bridge tool works on surfaces as well. So let's do one more example here. So I'm going to draw a flat plane and I'm just gonna eyeball it here. And then I'm going to subdivide this with my mesh tool and let's go something like 15 feet in that direction and maybe seven feet in that direction. Now what I'm gonna do is deselect that and I'm going to modify that into a sub D. And you'll notice that everywhere where there was an edge, I now get a piece of control cage. I'm gonna deselect that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a copy of this mesh vertically directly above it. So clicking on it with the move tool with the one copy option and my perpendicular snap enabled, you can see I can drag a copy of this mesh directly vertically. Now, in order for this sub D to work exactly how I want it to, I actually wanna reverse this top subdivision surface so that it is facing the bottom surface because what I'm gonna do is bridge between them. So under the manage tool set down here, we have a reverse tool and I'm just gonna click on this top surface. And you can see now that the mesh faces downward, whereas before they were both facing upward. Now what I'm gonna do is click on the bridge tool and I'm gonna bridge from a face on the bottom surface to a different face on the top surface. And you can see I get a really beautiful transition between those two different surfaces and I could choose to twist that into maybe a more straightforward transition between those two. You can see what it looked like before and after by introducing a twist with a number three. And if I wanted to add additional edges to that, I could do that as well. So it's totally up to you when you're sculpting to get exactly the thing that you want. But some pretty neat results can be achieved with subdivision surfaces. And you can mesh between faces and objects and faces and other faces. And at any time you could merge those together and bridge between multiple objects and create some really interesting geometry. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.